Hello? Hello? Come in, Earthlings. Come in, Earthlings from Kentucky, Anna. Oh, hello. It is I, Zonda Zek, from the planet WBG in the Sector 502. I come to you today because I have an important transmission for my planet. Aliens are invading your ecosystems. No, not me. I come in peace. However, there are some very interesting organisms that are invading your ecosystems as we speak that aren't supposed to be there. They're called invasive species. Have you ever heard of invasive species before? Well, here we go. I, I put together a presentation for my planet that I'd like to share with you guys. Here we go, oh my goodness. Let me tell you something, guys. These, these earth machines are so primitive. It's very hard for me to get things together. Okay, here we go, here we go. All right, so here's my presentation. It's all about ecosystem invaders. You should listen because it's very important. We're going to be talking today about invasive species that are invading your ecosystem. Now, before we talk about invasive species, Earthlings, we need to talk about what a native species is. A native species is a living thing, like a plant or an animal, that normally lives and thrives in a particular ecosystem. Now, I've done a lot of research on your, your little planet there on Earth, and I've noticed that in Kentucky, you have several native species like oak trees and maple trees and white-tailed deer and raccoons. Those are native species. They are plants and animals that naturally live in your ecosystem. But sometimes, usually because of humans' mistakes, other plants and other animals that aren't supposed to live in your ecosystem get to your ecosystem. And sometimes they start to take over. An invasive species is a living thing that moves or migrates to an ecosystem where there, it is not native and does not naturally belong there. That native, that invasive species will reproduce and it will begin to thrive. And then it starts to compete, <laughs> starts to compete with other native species for resources like food, water, shelter, and space. Very scary. I have a few examples of some invasive species, some invaders that I'd like to share with you today. One of them comes from the Everglades National Park in Florida. Do you earthlings in Kentucky know where Florida is? Hmm? I hear it's not too far from where you live in Kentucky. Just a little bit to the south, beautiful national park filled with lots of beautiful wetlands and swamp areas. Uh oh, here we go. Now, there are native species. Remember I said those are animals and plants that naturally live there in the Everglades. Here's a food web. A food web is a diagram that shows the how matter and energy move through an ecosystem. The arrows point towards what is getting the energy. Now I see here at the bottom, we have a few examples here, a few examples of plants that are native to the Everglades National Park, like sawgrass. There's also some algae in the water. Those are plants that grow that animals can eat and consume. Can you tell by the diagram something that eats or consumes the sawgrass? Well, how about the Florida red-bellied turtle? It eats the sawgrass. And what is something that might get its energy from the turtle? Oh, I see it at the very, very top. It's big, it's green, it's mean. It's an American alligator. American alligators are naturally the apex predator. That means the top eater in the food web in the Everglades National Park. Lots of other native species here in our food web. I see some raccoons and hey, if you like fishing there in Kentucky, it looks like uh, they got some bass and some bluegill there, even some snails and a frog. So lots of native species there in the Everglades National Park. Now, here is a picture of 
one of the organisms, one of the living things you should be a little worried about. This organism is an invader. It is not a native species to the Everglades National Park. It's called a Burmese python. Where are Burmese pythons normally from? They're normally from the continent of Asia. They're not even from North America at all. They can get to be really, really big. They can get to be up to 23 feet and they can weigh up to 200 pounds. Oh my goodness, they're a very big snake. Their natural predators in Asia where they live naturally are tigers and venomous snakes. So they have natural predators that would hunt them in their natural continent of Asia. In the United States, guess how many predators they have naturally? None except you humans. Now, you might be asking yourself, how did this invasive species, the Burmese python, how in the world did it get to North America if it was supposed to be in Asia, if it is native to Asia? And the answer is the pet trade, which means human beings have taken their snakes out of their natural habitat in Asia and brought them to the United States to try to make pets out of them. Lots of people in Florida, in the, back in the 1980s, wow, that was a long time ago, back when Zonda Zek was born, back in the 1980s, lots of people in Florida started to buy big snakes like Burmese pythons. But after they owned those Burmese pythons for a while, whew, they decided they were too hard to take care of. Big, huge snake took up so much space, they had to feed it live stuff like, you know, rats and, and rabbits or whatever other sort of small mammals you guys have there on Earth. And it was just too much work for them, too much work for them to do. So they decided, those, those human beings in Florida, they decided they were going to put the snakes somewhere warm where there would be lots of room to move around and it, they wouldn't get cold and they'd have plenty to eat. Hmm, that sounds like a smart decision. They didn't want to take care of them old Burmese pythons anymore. Let's take them, let's put them out in the Everglades. Hey, remember the picture of the Everglades that I showed you a minute ago? Big swampy space, lots of space for them to move around. Hey, that sounds like a good idea. But guess what? One person did it. Another person did it. We had several, you guys had several people emptying out these, these Burmese pythons into the, into the Florida Everglades. And so many of them found each other and they began to reproduce and have babies. Do you know how many babies the Burmese python has in its clutch? It can lay up to like a hundred eggs. That's a hundred babies that hatch out in the Everglades. And do you remember who I said their natural predators were? There's not very many natural predators in the Florida Everglades other than humans. So they didn't really have any predators. So now in the Florida Everglades, there are tons of Burmese pythons floating around just because a lot of people released them out into the wild and then they started to breed and have babies. How do you think the native species feel about those old Burmese pythons coming in? Coming in there, those big huge snakes, remember I said they could be golly up to 23 feet long? Whew, they're really big snakes. All the animals in the food web here are like, oh no, oh no, oh no, because they're worried. Well, what's going to happen with this Burmese python? Well, if we think about it here, what might a Burmese python like to eat in this picture? Hmm. Well, he might like to eat some of those birds like, I don't know, that old uh, uh, stork there or uh, that limpkin. Might like to eat those guys. He might even eat that raccoon. That might be yummy for him to eat. Lots of good things for him to eat there. Birds and mammals. But I tell you what, in addition to eating the birds and mammals, He'll also eat other reptiles. Yep. So not only is he making those old American alligators compete for the food, you know, the American alligators, they like to eat the, the raccoons and the birds and stuff too. Not only is he competing for, the, for food with them, the snakes are also eating the alligators. So now in the Florida Everglades, huh, those American alligators aren't always the apex predator anymore. They're not always the biggest eater. The Burmese pythons are starting to be the biggest eater. So what do you think happens when this Burmese python comes in here and he starts eating all these, all these other organisms and all these other animals? It affects everybody. If he eats the alligators, then, and then he starts eating all the other animals, the other stuff, including the plants, are gonna start to disappear because a food web 
in an ecosystem, everything is balanced. And once you go in there and you start wreaking havoc with, havoc with an invasive species, whew, it is really hard to get your balance back. So the Burmese pythons are really messing stuff up there. They're affecting all the other populations of organisms, plants and animals in the Florida Everglades. Take a look at this. I found this in my research about Earth. It's an x-ray picture of an alligator inside a Burmese python. They can eat alligators. That's so crazy. Here are some pictures and some information about some other types of invasive species. Like for instance, have you ever heard of a zebra mussel? Zebra mussels are freshwater mussels that dart from the United States. They're actually naturally native to parts of Russia and Ukraine. They came to the U.S. because they attached themselves to boats, and the boats that came from over, over there in Russia and the Ukraine came over to the United States, and then the freshwater mussels, those zebra mussels, were here. These guys are, are really competitive for resources. They take up a lot of space, they breed very, very quickly, they feed on and, uh, and destroy the plankton that's in the water that other fish and other, other aquatic animals would eat. And they also clog up pipes to the water filtration plants. So, you know, that, that's not so good. So those guys are really taking over. They're starting to spread like, like, uh, like zebra mussels, actually. Yeah, they're starting to spread like zebra mussels all around the United States in the water. Another very famous invasive species from the United States is the emerald ash borer. You see that little guy? He's a little green bug there. I like, I really like the color green. <laughs> like he's like an alien color. It, it, the emerald ash borer is, is not native to the United States. Instead, it is native to Asia. How did it get here, you ask? It came to the United States. It came to where you live here, not the States. It came to where you live in the United States in, in pallets, wooden pallets that were shipped from Asia all the way to the United States. It burrowed and it hid inside and that's how it got to Canada and the United States. And now it continues to move about the country. And as it moves about the country, it uh, travels around in uh, firewood and logs. And as it moves around, it destroys a specific type of tree, a native tree in the United States called the ash tree. It's a deciduous tree, the ash tree. I believe in Louisville, you guys have something called the Louisville Slugger Bat Factory. And at the Louisville Slugger Bat Factory, I believe they make a lot of their baseball bats out of white ash. Well, here's the thing. Those uh, baseball bat makers are gonna have to be figuring out where else they can get their wood from because the emerald ash borer is destroying the ash trees on your planet. It's eating it up, burrowing into it, and destroying all the ash trees. In fact, now, believe it or not, ash trees are an endangered species because the emerald ash borer, that's not supposed to be there, is supposed to be from Asia, has eaten up all the ash trees. That's another invasive species. Let's take a look at that last guy. You notice him? He kind of looks like a beaver, but he has like a rat tail. That's called a nutria. Nutria are not native to the United States. They're actually native to South America. They were brought to the United States and they were supposed to be bred and farmed and used for their thick coats. In the fur in the fur industry, they were going to make beautiful, luxurious coats and purses and belts and hats out of their fur. And uh, it really didn't pan out. It really didn't work out. So eventually, the farmers just uh, they like let the nutria out into the United States. They are rodents. They had babies very, very quickly. And as they started to have babies, things got pretty rough because nutria aren't native to the United States. Because they are an invasive species, they do things like eat up all the aquatic plants in the wetlands in Louisiana. They even eat the roots of the plant so the plants don't grow back. They're destroying the wetlands in Louisiana. They also tunnel in and they burrow into the levees and the flood and the flood uh, the flood walls, and they they destroy the flood walls. And so flooding is flooding is a problem. These guys have all kinds of problems, all kinds of troubles. 
So yeah, definitely check out some the information about those other types of animals that can be an invasive species. Now I know what you're thinking. Invasive species must only be animals. Not true, not true. Invasive species can also be plants. Can plants be invasive? Yep, yep they can. Plants can also be invasive. One of the most serious invasive species in the United States period is the kudzu plant. It is definitely an invader. Take a look at these pictures here, guys. Do you see the one on the left? Is that your left? I don't know, I'm, I'm in space. It's hard for me to tell. Uh, the, the one on the, on the side, the, what's close up of the leaves there, nice leafy green vines. But the one on the other side, you can see that it's blanketing a whole field and a whole forest of trees. It just blankets and grows all over everything. Let's take a look a little bit closer. Let's learn a little bit more about kudzu here. All right, so kudzu was originally from, from Southern Asia, also from a different continent altogether, not even from the United States, not from North America. It was brought to the United States in the 1870s to help with erosion, uh-huh. It was helped to hold the soil together. The people brought it in because they thought all those thick vines, those thick vines and roots would help, help, help hold the soil together and help with erosion. Uh, uh, yeah, so what happens here is it grows very, very quickly and it covers and it blankets all the other plants in the ecosystem. So it grows over trees, it grows over grass, it grows over bushes, it grows over shrubs, it grows over ferns, it grows over flowers, any other kind of plant, it just kind of creates a blanket and grows over it. Now I bet you know all the things that plants need to survive. Like for instance, you know that plants need sun, right? They need sun, they need water. Those are two things that they need. And they also need space to grow. If you've got a kudzu plant covering you up, it's pretty hard to get access to the sun. It's pretty hard to get water when the kudzu vines are sucking up all your water. So these kudzu plants, they kind of grow and they cover over everything. And uh, if you drive down south, like if you, if you went on a vacation, hey, here's a good idea. Why don't you go down to the Florida Everglades and take a vacation? If you were to drive from your state of Kentucky down to the Florida Everglades, I guarantee you'd probably see some kudzu, that invasive species from Asia, covering up all your native trees, all your beautiful deciduous trees and pine trees as you're driving through uh, Georgia and Alabama and getting down there to Florida. I guarantee you'd see it. So this is one plant that's really hard to kill. Even if people try to cut it back, it just keeps growing back really, really quickly. Do you think there's other invasive plants? Ha, you betcha, but guess what? In order to find out about the other invasive plants, you guys need to stay tuned to WBG's social media because later on today, Miss Chelsea is gonna tell you all about our invaders from all about your invaders from Kentucky. So you guys better listen up and pay attention to Chelsea so you can see what you can do to help in invaders stop invading your state of Kentucky, okay? All right, guys, we'll see you later. Bye! Signing out.